welcome back guys to another video on the channel i'm jake ellenbogen and today we'll be stating the claim making the case for a guy that should be in the hall of fame a guy that i shouldn't be having to tell you should be in the hall of fame a guy that i literally assumed was in the hall of fame when i was a kid and that is Roman Gabriel, the great Roman Gabriel from the LA Rams and the Philadelphia Eagles at the end of his career. We're going to be talking about his career and we're going to make the case as to why Roman Gabriel should be in the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Before we get into it, be sure to subscribe, uh, drop a comment and leave a like. If you don't know who Roman Gabriel is, I guess now it's time to get educated, right? So let's get into it. He was the 1969 NFL MVP. He was the Pro Football Writers of America Comeback Player of the Year in 1973. He is a Pro Bowl MVP, which is something that's, I don't know, I thought it was cool. I figured I'd mention it. Four-time Pro Bowler from 67, 68, 69, and 73. First team All-Pro in 1969. Uh, he was pretty much one of the top-notch quarterbacks uh, in the late 60s, he started 89 games for the Rams despite suffering all sorts of injuries to his knee and his shoulder uh, during that time. And he was truly first of his kind, measuring in at six foot four and 235 pounds at quarterback. When you think of that, who does that come to mind? Well, it comes to mind a few quarterbacks because that's kind of the norm today. But the way he was, the way he played against everyone else, he was like a, a you know, what Big Ben is today. Ben Roethlisberger for the Pittsburgh Steelers. That is what uh, Roman Gabriel was before Ben Roethlisberger was born. Uh, Roman Gabriel was that big bodied quarterback. That's not a big deal now because that's like the standard, but he was the big bodied quarterback in a league where nobody had really seen that. And so he was ultra hard to bring down sack and he would make plays all over the place with his legs uh, in the pocket while he was being brought down. He'd flick his wrist. And the ball would go flying. He had unbelievable accuracy, ball placement, what have you. He had an, a cannon for an arm. Uh, multiple players have come out and literally said guys that had played with him or you know against him said this is somebody that could throw it through a brick wall and this is somebody that could throw it 90 yards. And while the brick wall comment might have been a little out of left field, the 90 yards apparently isn't. There's a rumor that he actually threw a 90-yard pass um, and it, you know, it didn't end up going anywhere but he threw it 90 yards so he's capable of doing that and in my opinion you know he never won the big game despite being on you know the team with the fearsome foursome I know that's a huge knock right it's a huge knock for the fearsome foursome but you're not going to not put Merlin Olsen in the hall of fame you're not going to not put Deacon Jones in the hall of fame you know so I guess my point with Roman Gabriel is there's a player that comes to mind that's similar to him in the modern day that people are arguing should be in the Hall of Fame and he'll probably get more of a look than Roman got. And that player, with all due respect, is former San Diego Chargers, LA Chargers, and Indianapolis Colt, Phillip Rivers. And here's the thing, okay? Phillip Rivers, very, very good quarterback, but he never won the big game. And to me, if you are saying that Phillip Rivers is a Hall of Famer playing in an era where there's a lot of throwing of the football, you know, you had guys, of course, like Antonio Gates on your team, LaDainian Tomlinson, it seems quite unfair to not put Roman Gabriel in the Hall of Fame, who was pretty much doing what he was doing before he was doing it. And I'd make the argument he was a better quarterback, wasn't further down the rungs than Rivers. Rivers was never in that elite status. He was never in the Brady, Rodgers, Breeze, Manning of the league. However, Roman Gabriel was of that elite status. He was in that Bart Starr category. So, you know, to me, I feel like he's just gotten a little unfairly treated. He retired as the all-time leading passer in Rams history. He's no longer the all-time leading passer in Rams history. That belongs to Jim Everett. But he did retire that. Uh, this is somebody that had 201 touchdowns passing, 149 interceptions, which is pretty good. There are guys in the Hall of Fame that have more interceptions than touchdowns thrown. There's literally a guy that had his number retired by the Rams that had more interceptions than touchdowns thrown. That was Bob Waterfield. So I do find that uh, funny. And it also seems kind of weird that his number 18 isn't retired by the Rams anyway. But 
he's so deserving that people give you a weird look when you tell them he's not in the Hall of Fame. Multiple people I've talked to, you know, people that I know and don't really follow football, just kind of assumed that Roman Gabriel, as big as he was, I mean, he was an icon, and he's not in the Hall of Fame. It seems pretty bizarre to me. And I understand people would make the argument against him, well, he only had this. You know, this was his career length, and it was, you know, 67, 68, 69, and then he had that 73 season with Philly, uh, that was like comeback player of the year worthy. And besides that, he didn't play that well. You could you could argue that, but are we like are we just pretty much picking and choosing? Are we cherry picking like what we're gonna look at? There are certain guys that aren't in the Hall of Fame that belong, and then there are certain guys that are in the Hall of Fame that you could argue belong, but like why did they get in over another? And, and like that's the thing is that there are guys that like Art Monk took forever to get in. You know, he's a perfect example. Henry Ellard retired as a top three receiver, and he's still not in the Hall of Fame. There's all sorts of guys. And at the quarterback position that we're so biased to, so biased for, to the point where Philip Rivers is like, people think he's a no-brainer Hall of Famer, but don't think Roman Gabriel's in the Hall of Fame, is just mind-blowing to me. You have to keep in mind, in his time period, Roman Gabriel's statistics are really good. I mean, for his time period, they're really good. He was 86 and 64 and 7 because he had seven ties. He played 183 games. He had 29,444 passing yards. He had 201 touchdowns again, 149 interceptions, 52.6 completion percentage. He's a four-time All-Pro, one-time uh He's a four-time Pro Bowler, one-time All-Pro, and one-time MVP. He just didn't win the big game. But, I mean, you know, I I just – I don't really like that as, like, a barometer. Like, so he's 0-2 in the playoffs, but, you know, it's it's more than that. And, honestly, his playoff statistics aren't horrible. Three touchdowns, 336 uh, passing yards, two interceptions. The thing is, guys, it's it's this, okay? The NFL – has refused I mean it's not like they've you know been asked by somebody huge maybe we should get on that but they've refused to release all of the film dating back to God knows when right so it's like all we do me being a 25 year old diehard NFL fan you know following all the going back I love the history and all of that all I can do is look at stats Look at like a handful of games that are on the internet that you can't really find anywhere. And look at accolades. How is it fair that sports writers are dictating who gets in the Hall of Fame based on like who they they voted for for their accolades? There are players that didn't win Pro Bowls or didn't get Pro Bowl nominees or, or didn't get all pros. And they led the league in their respective category that year for their position. I mean, it's happened. And so I just think it's ridiculous to me. There's just not enough out there. But then, of course, you you had the leatherheads, the guys that weren't even wearing, you know, they were wearing leather helmets. And all all we're told to do is just stay in our lane and be like, no, you, you don't understand. He was that great. He was amazing. He was the start. But then we actually should, like, we would have legitimate film on Roman Gabriel. I mean, he played in the 60s. He played the Fearsome Foursome era. How come the Fearsome Foursome is recognized, but Roman Gabriel's greatness is not? He played in the wrong era. If he played in the passing era of this this time of day, you know, he'd be one of the best. And that's my argument. But on top of that, I just, I think he's got a resume and he's an icon. And the only thing is he didn't win the big game. Congrats. There's a lot of guys that haven't won the big game that belong in the Hall of Fame. But that's that's my case that I'm making for Roman Gabriel. I believe he belongs. Uh, you know, he's in all sorts of different Hall of Fames that just aren't the Pro Football Hall of Fame. So clearly, people believe that. Uh, it just seems ridiculous. He's gotten all sorts of, you know, all sorts of, um, you know, support, outside support from guys that played with him, guys that played against him modern day guys people have come out in support of roman gabriel being in the hall of fame so that is my thoughts there 
Uh, hope you guys enjoyed. If you guys don't know who Roman Gabriel is, definitely educate yourself. He is a uh, a great quarterback. I also had the opportunity to interview him. I probably should post that interview at some point. He was an absolute joy to interview. Um, so, you know, I definitely have no problem going to bat for him. He was just quite the quite the talent there. So it took him a while to get going, get his feet under him. But when he did, he was a freight train. And, and you know, he has 16 comebacks. He had 15 game-winning drives. He played on some good teams, but he also played on some poor teams. Philadelphia was not a good team. But you look, and this is a perfect example, it's a 53. I don't know how many then, but it was. it's 53 now. It's a 53-man sport. And so when we, you know, relegate the entire success to a quarterback when there's 52 other guys, it seems ridiculous. However, we don't give Roman Gabriel enough credit for what he did at age 33 with Philly. Uh, you know, he threw over 3,000 yards. He had 23 touchdowns. I mean, he ended up going to a Pro Bowl. That team went 5-8-1. and one. So it goes to show you, even when he was good, he still had poor play around him. But those are my thoughts. Hope you guys enjoyed. I'll be back. I'll be doing more videos. We got the uh, the NF the JE100 uh, series that we're doing. Um, I'm going to do the Make the Case series. I think I'm going to start making that a thing. Uh, next up, I already have decided we're going to make the case uh, for longtime Raiders cornerback uh, Lester Hayes. Uh, getting in the Hall of Fame because they, it's just it's criminal uh, for him not to be in. But uh, again, hope you guys enjoy. If you did, uh, you know, be sure to subscribe, like and drop a comment. I will talk to you guys soon. You guys take care later.